The physical handicaps some animals face in their use of tools evaporate in the misty tropical forests of Africa. Here, primates are endowed with a trusty old opposable thumb that allows them to grasp objects firmly. The shoots of evolutionary growth bless their world. And it all begins here, in the construction of a nest. Every evening, chimpanzees set about building nests in trees, like orangutans and gorillas who do the same on the ground. They pay such close attention to comfort that it's difficult not to see in this ritual the act of making up a bed. It's all down to the right selection of branches, those that don't rudely spring back when the occupants slip into dreamland. Creature comforts in the canopy ensure a peaceful night far from nocturnal predators on the ground. Look at those creative hands at work. But there's symbolic importance here too. The chimps aren't just manipulating objects. The nest, according to some primatologists, was their original tool, the first primitive act that led great apes to greater thoughts, greater ideas, greater physical achievements. It was a crucial event in their evolution, and ultimately, in the evolution of man. Great apes often use the same material to make different sets of tools. Our closest relative in the wild, the bonobo, ekes out a precarious existence in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Again, they pay close attention to comfort. Leaves become mattresses to insulate against the damp and protect against insects. And when it comes to personal hygiene, leaves and moss take on very functional uses. Bathroom habits performed with choice accessories. Of all the great apes, none can match the chimpanzee for frequent daily use of tools. The chimpanzee's toolkit lends itself to 19 recorded uses. Chimps are the jack of all trades. They're demonstrative animals, especially the dominant male patrolling his own territory. He must be seen to be in charge. He wields a stick like a policeman's baton as a deterrent and often to intimidate others and command respect. Beyond macho displays, chimps put tools to more subtle uses. An extended limb makes up for a short reach to scratch around for food or other curiosities. Tools open up all kinds of culinary delights for chimpanzees, extending the range and variety of their diet. In Tanzania's Mahale National Park, a group has learned to use twigs to lure ants out of holes.
ant fishing, as it's known, carries on all year round, about the only activity that does for chimpanzees. And a twig saves them from being bitten by the ant itself. Not any old twig will do. Chimps adapt the tool for the job. They strip a tender creeper until it's thin and smooth enough to slip into the hole. Thin and tender for the ants to take hold too. Not all chimps practice the technique of ant fishing. Those who do pass the skill on to younger chimps. It'll take years of learning and experience to really get the knack. Not all chimps are equal, and some are certainly less equal than others. Thick-skinned fruits like baobab, so rich in vitamins, and any number of hard nuts provide a litmus test in the study of tool use among chimps. For many, getting to the fruit is a question of trial and error. This technique shows more promise than others. What is the solution? It's getting warmer, but lacks a second implement which other chimps elsewhere already have. Some chimpanzees living in the forests of West Africa cracked the problem with an ingenuity that amazed primatologists like Tetsuru Matsuzawa of the Primate Research Institute in Japan. That is nut cracking. Use a pair of stones to crack open nuts. In this case, you need a set of tools. One is hammer. Another is amber, so two stones are necessary, not a simple object. In this case, it's very difficult because not only the two stones, but also you have to pay attention to the target nut. Thanks to the members of the community, the young in chimpanzees, infants and juveniles had abundant experience of carefully watching what adults do, use a pair of stones to crack open nuts. And three, four, five, six, seven years, now they learn how to use stones to crack open nuts. Otherwise, they cannot uh, do such a thing. Abundant stones are available, so the Bosu chimpanzee has no necessity to carry the stones because wherever the nuts are available, nearby there are lots of stones. I have seen both cases. Chimpanzee transport stones to nuts or chimpanzee collect nuts and transport them to the stones. Both cases, but it's only about 5-10 meters. So we are interested in how the skill and knowledge can be transmitted from one generation to the next. I think a sort of education by master apprenticeship is very important. So first, the mother or adults of the community show the right model in the right way, using stones properly to crack open nuts. The second point is the infant has a strong motivation, intrinsic motivation, to watch the adult's behavior and to make the copy of the behavior. And the third point is the mother and the adults are very tolerant. 
to the infant, any kind of spontaneous attempt by infant. So that is a core part of my theory of education by master apprenticeship. And what I call education by master apprenticeship is a traditional way of education in Japan and other traditional countries. And then that is a way of education in wild chimpanzees. Professor Matsutsawa's research reveals ever more complex combinations of tools used by these chimps. We have seen chimpanzees use the sandstone as a wedge to adjust the surface level flat. Now the nut is stabilized on the amber stone and that nut can be hit to get the kernel edible part. Okay, in this case, three stones are involved in the nut cracking as a set of tool. The third stone should be the first step to use a tool for another tool. This is a sort of quantum jump from the simple tool use to get a goal because the tool was used for another tool. So such a tool is called meta tool. And so far, the wedge stone used by Bosu chimpanzee in the wild is the single case of the meta tool used by the wild chimpanzees. Frédéric Julien of the School of Social Sciences in Paris studies nutcracking techniques among other chimpanzee populations in West Africa. In Bosu, they use mobile anvils, and they can be used either as anvils or as hammers. And at the Banco site in the Ivory Coast, I was able to see chimpanzees using this as an anvil. You see traces of a hollow which have been used to crack nuts. The chimpanzees would have placed nuts in the hollow to break them. But previously, they had used another side, and we also discovered on this side an indentation. So this anvil had probably been used previously as a hammer. This is what the chimpanzees did. They used this part as a hammer. On a découvert sur l'autre face une cupule d'utilisation. Et donc, cette enclume avait au préalable servi probablement de percuteur et les chimpanzés s'en étaient servis de percuteur. So tools have multiple uses depending on who's using them and where. Let's imagine that we find a particular tool in a prehistoric site. Well, that's exactly what happened to Mary Leakey, a well-known prehistorian in the 1960s who discovered tools like this one in the Olduvai Gorge and dated it back 1,700,000 years ago, 1.8 million years on the site of DK1. The tools were made either by Australopithecus or by Homo habilis. We're not exactly sure. In any case, one of man's ancestors. In fact, this instrument, which is identical, was discovered among chimpanzees in West Africa in the year 2000 during a dig that I was organizing. The analogy is amazing. L'analogie est totale. Les outils sont identiques entre ceux de 2 millions d'années et ceux d'aujourd'hui des chimpanzés. Ce qui veut dire que là these tools are identical, one from two million years ago and the other from modern chimpanzee tools. This means that humans, who are always thought to be uniquely hunters and gatherers, were also consuming fruits and nuts. And what we just found out recently, based on observations made in South Africa, is that they seem to use tools made from bone to open up termite hills and extract termites, in the same way as chimpanzees were doing. This is one of the reasons why, about 20 years ago, I became interested in primates in order to interpret the first human tools, the first behavior of ancient humans.
thumbs up for apes who laid down a marker in the evolution of tool use.